When we went out into the market and looked at the analysis that was available, specifically focusing on the media industries, we found that lacking. So we decided to do it ourselves. And we hope that the report that we've produced is a useful contribution to the discussion on what's going to happen in the future of media. The report's a joint work between DLA Piper and external consultants at the Lawyer Magazine's marketing intelligence team. And it came about after 200 Q&As with executives and lawyers from the media industries, and then a number of in-depth interviews with senior executives and in-house counsel. First and foremost was the finding that OTT applications uh, represent the single most exciting prospect for driving business expansion and revenue for the people that we interviewed. There were any number of models that were participating in OTT and what it suggested but didn't explicitly say was that you're going to see, probably not in 2018 specifically, but in the near future, a shakeout between aggregation and disaggregation as the principal model in OTT. For many of the people our team spoke to, it's clear that 2018 is the year when they see most of their revenues coming from OTT. Aggregation as a, as a phenomenon still serves a fairly useful social purpose in the sense that people still need some tricks to find what it is they really want to watch, and aggregation is going to serve that purpose. What happens when uh, the commercial comes on or the advertising comes on? Everybody picks up their smartphone, takes a look at it, and they're not watching the, the commercials, the advertising. That means that advertisers are in some way wasting their money, not spending their money wisely. From a global perspective, it seems like uh, the convergence in the media and technology landscape is being blurred more than ever before. And the rumors are that global tech companies individually are going to spend somewhere between $1 billion and $8 billion each in 2018. The most prevalent tools that people are using these days in China is something called WeChat, which is very quickly advancing China into a cashless society. These days, uh, every company uh, needs to have a marketing strategy which is related to WeChat. From a Middle East perspective, I think there's been uh, two particular standout trends. Firstly is the growth of online-only OTT providers and new market entrants offering uh, a standalone subscription service. Uh, and then secondly is the attitude of traditional pay TV broadcasters who I think to date had seen their OTT offering really as an extension uh, of an existing subscription, whereas now the trend is undoubtedly moving towards those pay TV providers offering their own uh, alternate internet-only service services and subscriptions. What was perhaps more surprising in the context of media is that there is a real concern that a number of factors, but particularly concerns around data privacy and cyber security, might well undermine the ability of media companies to take full advantage of the genuinely transformative effects of big data. And for lawyers, there's a pretty clear lesson, like it or not, we're all data lawyers now. On the one hand, you have the benefit of using content worldwide, but on the other side, you have to protect the legitimate interests of right owners and protector producers. The major concerns were about the ability for UK broadcasters to passport their services over and sell into Europe, and also, in the medium term, how UK law and European law would start to diverge on issues like copyright. It's an exciting time to be a professional working in this marketplace. We're dealing right now in the augmented reality space, a totally new landscape, uh, legal principles that haven't been established in terms of what is uh, you know, the IP in connection. You have a physical space, you have a digital world, uh, the legal landscape hasn't caught up. We hope you find this report interesting and we really look forward to continuing the discussion with you.